This video is a second in a look at rigging um, and skinning characters, so I'm actually going to take this back from the quick rig setup that we've done set by step uh, to a blank version of this character, uh, which is just the mesh. So instead of using quick rig, there are other options. Um, so from the skinning menu, we have interactive bind skin. Now, similarly, we have bind skin, which will take us directly to the last tool we looked at, which was the paint skin weights. Um, but this interactive bind skin allows you to start the process um, quite quickly. <coughs> to begin with, though, we do need to create a skeleton. Um, and if we press create skeleton here, we should get a skeleton that actually fits this character very well. So these are designed to actually work um, straight out of the box. So that's the right height. Uh, these are mostly in the right position. So with a small amount of adjustment, um, we will be able to make this work. So I'm going to bring that, um, rotate these arms so they are actually going through the character. Um, we could move these slightly out so that it's actually um, touching is more in line with the mesh there. Um, I normally don't worry too much about these uh, and I don't worry too much about the symmetry but um, I do want to make sure that this elbow lines up with the elbow and then that hand lines up with the hand. So if I select those and use the move tool rather than the rotate tool I can start getting these into the more exact position of how I might want them. Um, so that's nearly there. I mean the hand rigging is quite a specialist area so unless you are definitely having close-ups of the hand um, you may not need to do this and you will need to curl those uh, around and get a good approximation on the fingers if you were working with that. <coughs> So we're going to line these up in a reasonable way. Uh, just get that rotation round. So for this, um, I'll just zoom in on the hand there. There, I mean, there's so many joints in the hand that um, you can get these positioned better. Uh, and part of that is in the rotation, um, but uh, you needn't if you're not actually working fully with the fingers. That's what I'm trying to say there. So that's um, another process you can go through uh, to match the character. And it is a matter of moving and rotating these. Um, this may cause trouble. It may give me a slight issue if I um, have odd rotations in these fingers. Um, may make a slight difference to my uh, my rigging and you may need to zero the um, the rotations on that uh, if I have the skeleton selected there is an option to modify freeze transformations and that will just zero out everything that you've done because um, at the moment these will be showing some rotation um, so just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to do all the fingers. I've done some lining up there. Um, but if I want to work with these uh, and do an interactive skin bind, I'm selecting the hips of the skeleton and holding down shift and selecting the body mesh. And now I can go to interactive skin bind. And this brings up a tool setting here. If you haven't got this, uh, you can get that from double clicking on the window there. Um, for example, if I close that tab, uh, double click and it comes in. I've reset the tool in case I've used it in another way somewhere else. But this will give me all the different um, parts of the body and show me where they are having an influence on the body. So it's actually created this already for me. Um, if I have uh, the rotate tool uh, I can actually see that the 
body's moving already but what I'm getting are these um, odd shapes and that's proving that, that the rigging actually needs some work so I'm going to go back with that uh, I'm going to find the interactive bind tool again and I can look for areas within it that have bad influence so this bottom leg here uh, the leg the bones probably too far forward on that but to actually adjust that I can move this capsule select the capsule there select the move tool no select this should be able to move that capsule slightly you can do that by grabbing it parts of the parts of the capsule so that will expand it and shrink it um, this one here should move back um, but maybe that I just work with that there and scale that up and I should be able to move that higher now it's affecting the foot more so I'll take the bottom part there and I can see that that red goes just over that joint at the top here um, and that's allowing me to get a much wider influence so now what, what I've got a problem with here is this influence on the other uh, the other leg so I've gone too far with that to make sure that's low so we're kind of getting a darker orange on there um, and again bringing that down so that we can get a nice even mix over that leg so the upper leg is, is not show, oh, shows up now it's also going over the leg so I want to have that going into the rainbow colors because red is the full influence and as it goes through the color spectrum it lessens as it goes down. I need to check this area here um, to check that that's not uh, showing up in that area, which it is. Um, I'll put that back to how I had it. Um, so I actually want to just shrink that down slightly. Um, that will help that. Um, so now I can then just go back and check what influence I have on that. So now I can check that the so that's a lot better than it was. There's still a quite a sharp curve in there. Um, and so if I want to do that interactively I can push that away and see what kind of changes that makes. Um, and go through both of those and just take away and add right there. So now I've got a crease in there, which is actually better than how it was before. So I'm pleased with that. Um, I can't undo, or normally I just undo once I've done a, um, a move on the tool, but I can go in and remove that rotation on that leg and bring that back. I can also do another thing, which is useful to, to know about. So if I have done this and tested it, um, and if I've also done it on, on the other side, you can see there the difference between the two. Um, I can go skin, go to bind pose, and that takes it back to the position it was in. So again, that's a good way of working. Um, if I rotate this here, I can see another key area where the rib cage gets affected by the arms. And that's another one I normally have to fix using this. Um, so we can go to left forearm uh, and the spine. So I can check the spines aren't influencing there. So the spines aren't touching the arms. Uh, but the left shoulder is having, it seems quite reasonable in the areas it's, it's affecting. It is affecting the chin slightly. So I don't really want to have the shoulder affecting the chin. So I can take that. Um, that down slightly, uh, tone that down, and really just kind of make that lessen that area. So the left arm, I can see that there it is having a big influence on the rib cage. So I'm going to shrink this as much as I can and actually get that just to work on that elbow 
a little bit better. Um, so there is some slight stretch that's going to happen around here, um, but that is a, probably going to be a big improvement on what it was, and the forearm uh, isn't touching the ribcage at all. So now if I do a comparison with the two different arms, I should be able to rotate this one up and away. Uh, and I've got some more influence to do on that, um, but it's probably a lot less than on the other side. So I've removed a lot of that. Um, if I go back uh, and try it in situ, remove that, see that there? When I've removed the influence completely, you'll get these resorting down to the origin. That means there's no influence on that point at all. So I'm just going to undo part of that left shoulder. <coughs> so the left shoulder is a little bit tricky, but I think it's the arm. And then I'll check the neck and the spines with that as well left arm, see how that kind of raises and takes away, so we've got some influence on that and it may be we want to go stronger on some of these areas as well, so if I actually expand that out here, or bring that down slightly, I'll make it more of an influence in these areas, so I don't want that to go through the over the chin too much. You can see how kind of adjusting these adds influence to those areas and brings it towards that that point. Going left shoulder, I've got slightly wrong there. Um, and I can check the spine. I can also check the neck. Isn't affecting that. Uh, and like I say, just strengthening up some of the influences on these areas will actually help as well. So if I can get that right or get that stronger in certain positions, it will um, help the the rigging as I'm going forward. So it's, it's kind of um, important to get that tech these techniques right and. So just to make sure that we're, we're getting enough um, influence in certain places. So if I take that all away, I'm still getting some movement of that um, in that position. So uh, the more I shrink it, the more that goes. Um, and if I shrink it completely, I can see that there isn't any influence on there. So the influence is coming from this part. Um, and that might be something I do in a, with a different method. So uh, if I've been working on this in this method, the interactive skin bind, um, which works very well for me, I can then use the paint weights tool also on this mesh. So if I select the mesh, I should be able to uh, paint skin weights and look at the same area. So it's using the same techniques um, and I've got the same values on here as well. I'll just reset the tool so I can so I want to take away, I want to have a, a half size um, a half opacity so it kind of fades. The brush is too small so I can create the, a quite large radius um, and I should be able to just paint away that area and get that manually done um, and it will automatically assign that to a different node on the skeleton. So that's a slightly more accurate so the paint weights is the more traditional way of doing it um, but to get you a good um, approximation of how that's going to work um, you can work with this in this way so I'm doing the left shoulder just to take it off that area and that's going to move the uh, amount of influence that bone or that joint has on this this area there so you can see I've really tidied that up um, and now when I do the rotation I've got a very clean uh, 
bind on that there and it's probably a little bit of work to do on that, that shoulder area um, I was never convinced fully by the shoulders uh, let me just select the mesh um, to the shoulder I did have a bit of problem with left shoulder um, and I had my problem was that it was coming up onto the onto the chin a little bit so I can re reduce that uh, and in fact the top of the spine is something I can uh, reduce and I can just paint this on a, in this way here as well so um, it is useful to know both techniques uh, you can add value to sometimes it's a bit easier to just add complete value to an area so if it's got a hundred percent value it will take um, you'll take that right down just taking that right across the body there um, and then it's the right arm so I'll just find the find the correct node for that right shoulder right arm and negate this influence here as well so that's going to bring that straight down as well so this uh, skinning to bind paint skin weights tool is one of the most useful ones there is quite a bit of time to, to put into this um, to make this work in the right way uh, and often it's useful to have a, a video clip to or a, a motion capture clip to, to test your character with as well so um, once I've done this, if I was hand animating uh, using keyframes, I would uh, go into the HIK rig. It's called Character One. I could um, add a character uh, control rig, and that will allow me to then start animating that with the control rig. And also, I see where the the deformations are. So I, I fixed the the knee but I'm gonna to have to go in and fix the bulges so I think the upper legs are attracting each other with that as well so there's quite a bit of work to do on that um, but that's the principles behind it it's going through and checking checking the range of motion you'll be working with um, and generally fixing it until it's working with the animations that you need so obviously you want to save that when we're done Human mesh uh, interactive skin bind. 